That is uh, much larger than a garter snake that, I, that I'm used to seeing. I mean, this is, this is like a, a garter snake on steroids. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's not. It's a female garter snake. So uh -huh. she's definitely on the bigger side, but not totally untypical for garter snake females. Yeah. So the males weigh about 50 to 60 grams as adults, which is about a quarter of the size. Females, 200 to 250 is pretty average for wild snakes, and that's, you know, obviously significantly larger than the males, but that's typical for garter snakes. The females are always bigger. All right, so how do you tell one of these apart from just your, your common garter snake? Um, well, these guys are, have a very limited range, so San Francisco garter snakes are only found in San Mateo County, only along the coast area and in wetlands. So they have a very small distribution. Um, their colors are pretty special. There's the red-sided garter snake, which has some similar coloration, but they have actually a checkered stripe mm -hmm. here instead of a solid stripe where the black and the red is. So those are the distinguishing characteristics for, for them, plus the red-siders don't typically live in this area. Right. And now, how many of these are left uh, in the wild now? You know, we're, we're not entirely sure because they're really, really hard to locate. They're hard to trap. They're hard to count. Um, they've done some censuses here at Mori Point at El Nuevo and a, f a few other locations um, where we've, the Fish and Wildlife has actually hired biologists to come in and try to get an idea. They estimate, you know, 500, 600 maybe is the lowest number, but it could be a little higher on private lands. And what about right here? How many uh, did they find here in the, in the most recent survey? I think that they've estimated that its population is only about 12 to 20 at this time, but it's really hard to tell. Um, they're, they're difficult to see. In fact, biologists have worked here for years and not seen one. And so it's usually the occasional community member that's walking through that's like, oh, I see one over there. So it's really, really hard to tell. Um, they're smart. They either get really trap shy and don't go into traps, or they're really, they love traps, and they just keep going in there and catching the same individuals. So it's, it's difficult to tell. but. I, what I've heard is about 12 to 20 individuals. Wow. Now, I imagine there used to be more, much more than that here. Um, like, yeah. has, it, has it been steadily continuing to decline in, in their numbers? You know, again, a lot of that is hard, to, hard for me because I don't do that actual research. But in what I've heard, yes, the numbers have been in decline in this area. Because I would have thought that all the work they did on Maury Point already, these would, their numbers would have been increasing by now. And they have seen more of them. I mean, when they first started here, they had seen like one or two. And I know there's been a few more sightings. So, mm -hmm. you know, it takes time. It's not instantaneous. <laughs> you have to, you know, slowly build up a population. Um, I think it's exciting that they're still seeing them. So that's a good sign for sure. Um, and then I know they found some youngsters. So that means that they are, there is some breeding going on. It's just, it's going to take some time. And one last question. May I touch her? You can. You can touch her on the back. Okay. This is a lifelong dream of mine, actually. <laughs> there was love all around, but I never heard it singing. No, I never heard it at all, till there was you.